Okay. How am I gonna make this thumbnail? Oh no. Oh gosh. Oh my god. Do you like my cool pin? Nacho basic witch. Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you are new, my name is Hima Jen. I am a booktuber, I guess. I guess I've made enough videos that I can call myself a real booktuber now. I live in Japan. I make bookish content videos. I make hoggish content because I have two pet hedgehogs. You know, I talk about my daily life here in Japan. I complain a lot. I talk about my mental health, a lot of health problems. Just a lot of problems in general. If that sounds interesting to you, please feel free to subscribe. You read the title correctly. I read 15 books in one month and only one of those books was a graphic novel. The rest were novels. So I have some stats written down here for you. Let's talk about stats. I read 15 books in July for a readathon called the Book Junkie Trials. If you're wondering why I'm filming a video talking about books I read in July, that's because I wasn't making booktube videos in July. I think I started making videos in late August or early September. So this is a very new channel and I just felt like, dang it, I read 15 books in July and just because I wasn't a booktuber then doesn't mean that I don't get to talk about those books. So gosh darn it, I'm gonna make this video even if it's, what, four months late? Three months late? Whatever. I will talk a little bit about the book Junkie Trials later, but first I want to give you my stats. So I read a total of 5,467 pages, six physical books, five ebooks, and four audiobooks. So like I said, I read one graphic novel. The rest of the books were novels that ranged from fantasy, sci-fi, thriller, middle grade, contemporary, little bit of everything. There were two books that I read parts of but didn't finish. Those will receive honorable mentions at the end of the video. The book Junkie Trials was hosted and created by Rachel Marie. She is a booktuber. Her channel is called Rachel Marie's Book Journey and she created this really cool, ah, like we had quests and there was this big quest map and we had to join one of four teams and she actually had a quiz that would sort you into a team or you could just choose based on what team sounded up your alley. There were the scribes, the magi, the bards, and the outlaws and each of the four teams had different reading prompts. So I was sorted into the scribes and I did decide to stay with that team. So like I said, each team had their own prompts. Each team had strengths and weaknesses. For the first part, you were required to visit your places on the map or your team's places and you had to go in order. You were aiming for the group book, which was referred to as the bookie grail. Each team had four prompts and then the bookie grail. If you managed to complete all of your team's prompts and the group book and you wanted to go on to explore the rest of the map, you could. There was a total of 17 prompts and I was going for all 17, but I did fall short and only make it to 15 books. I mean, I still surprised myself by reading 15 books in one month. Once you set your TBR or to be read books, you couldn't change the TBR. For the scribes, their strength was to be able to switch out a book from their TBR. And I originally thought I was going to do that, but I ended up staying with the five books I decided to read in the beginning. I don't want to make this video too long, so I'm just going to get right into it and start talking about the books. I will link the video of Rachel Marie talking about the book Junkie Trials if you decide you want to join next year. I believe this year was the first year that um, she held the trials. So the first book that I read for the book Junkie Trials was for the prompt 
a book with a hint of romance and I chose Aurora Rising by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. This is actually the first book I've ever read by the dynamic duo. I know that they're very famous for the Illuminae Files. Don't worry, I will talk about the Illuminae Files a little bit later. So yeah, I, I went into this book not knowing too much about it, but I had heard that there was a hint of romance and I actually chose really well because there was just a hint in this book. This is a sci-fi story. A short synopsis would be there is a ragtag bunch of cadets, space cadets if you will. They're trainees in this academy called the Aurora Academy and they come together as a team and <laughs> it looks like they're gonna be the worst team ever. And then we have a girl who is rescued from cryosleep and she's been in cryosleep for like a couple hundred years. She's something special, I'll say that. <laughs> and she ends up with the squad and they go on all sorts of intergalactic missions with the girl who is also named Aurora in tow. Um, the, the one thing that I didn't love about this book is that it's told from so many different perspectives. So we have what, like six squad members and it alternates between their perspectives. And I feel like we didn't need that many perspectives. I mainly liked hearing Aurora's perspective, Tyler and, I guess we, we needed Cat. I'm not gonna say anymore. This was mainly a cover buy for me, I'm not gonna lie. I just absolutely thought this was a stunning cover and I did not have high expectations for this book. I absolutely loved this book. I loved it. It's got very mixed reviews, but I don't care. Anything in space, I love. I just loved the group dynamic, I loved the adventures, I loved the hint of romance that was going on. I loved everything about this book so much and I cannot wait for the sequel which they just announced this month and it's going to be called Aurora Burning and you bet your bottom dollar I am going to pre-order that bad boy. Got five stars from me, I had a blast reading it, I can't wait to reread it loved 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 this book i'm sorry if you didn't like it but i freaking loved it so now to the next book on my map and the prompt for that was to choose a book at random and i chose sleeping giants by sylvain Su sylvain nouvelle i hope i'm not mispronouncing that this was sent to me by my friend Rebecca, who lives in america she used to live here in japan and she sent me like seven books and I don't know if you've ever shipped anything from America to Japan but it is not cheap. So I actually read a couple books that she sent me in this wrap-up that I'm going to talk about. This is a, another science fiction story. If you don't know, science fiction is my favorite genre. A science fiction story about a girl who is like walking through the woods and she falls into a hole and she falls into the palm of a giant metal hand. Fast forward several years and this same girl is actually the leader of an investigation, I guess, about the metal hand. So they have determined that this hand is definitely not man-made, that the material it's made of, it's gotta be something not of this world. So her and her team, their researchers, investigators, I don't know, they believe that other body parts of the same nature of the hand are scattered about the earth and they go in search of them. And it's told in interview style. So there is a guy who is interviewing different people that were part of this researching team. I know there's three books in this series and I've only read the first book. So yeah, the, the trilogy is called the, the Themis Files, I believe. I did really like this book. It didn't leave a huge impact on me, but I enjoyed myself while reading it. 
definitely a cool concept, definitely interesting. The format was cool. There was a few twists and turns that I really liked and I ended up giving it four stars. The next book on my map had a prompt to read a book that has been on your TBR forever. And I chose da -da -da, The Illuminate Files. <laughs> this book has literally been on my TBR for like the past seven years. So I knew about it when it first came out. It generated a ton of hype when it first came out. If you've watched my channel, then you've definitely heard me talk about this book before. It's told in mixed media format, super interesting, cool concept. But unfortunately, the first couple times I tried to read this book, I DNF'd it. <laughs> the first two times I tried to read it, I think, I tried to read it on audiobook without the physical copy. And since it's told in this mixed media, you can't listen to it just on audiobook. You do not get the same experience. So I've heard a lot of people listen to it on audiobook while following along simultaneously with the hard copy. Before I picked up the hard copy, I bought it on ebook and I tried to read it on there. Again, I couldn't get into it. Finally, I broke down and bought the physical book. I almost DNF'd it again because as I was trying to get to get through it, there's a lot of different names, like the names of the spaceship, and I was having trouble keeping track of who is on what spaceship. Just the different lingo and jargon they use for things, but I kept going and about 100 or 150 pages in, I was completely and totally hooked. Sci-fi, it's thriller, horror, there's also romance. Honestly, just a little something for everyone. It's over 500 pages, but because it's told in this unique format, you go through it very quickly. I've read, what, 78 books this year currently? And we're in October. This is the best book I've read all year. No book has yet to top this. And I have read Gemina, which is book two. I have not read Obsidio yet. I am planning to read that this month. Absolutely five stars, well worth the hype, fantastically written book, wonderfully executed, a wild ride from start to finish, and I can see myself rereading this book many, many times. The next prompt on my map for the scribes was to read a book with rich world building, and for that I chose A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. This was another book that Rebecca sent to me in the little haul or goodie package she sent me. Of course, this was on my wish list. I had wanted to read this book and get into this series for a very long time. I have since read the second book. So this is the first book in the Shades of Magic trilogy. I have since read the second book and I've pre-ordered the third book. Actually, I think it's out already, but it, it takes a while to come from Book Depository. The special edition of the third book, A Conjuring of Light. This series has been out for a while, but I'm late to the game on a lot of stuff. All I really went into this book knowing was that there were four Londons of parallel worlds. And again, I've talked about this book many times on my channel. You have Red London, which is a magical world. Everybody uses magic practically. Grey London, which is like our world, there is, is no magic. You have White London, which is slowly being starved of magic, and it's a harsh, cruel world. And then you have Black London. Now, we don't talk about Black London because it was consumed by magic, okay? So we have Kel, who is an Antari, which means he's a blood magician and he can travel as kind of like a messenger, representative, I guess. What would I call him? A diplomat that travels between the worlds. Except for Black London, it was sealed off. Nobody goes to Black London. So there is another character, her name is Delilah Bard. She is from Grey London, which is the non-magical world. Her and Kel kind of make contact, I guess. They get involved with each other and go on a series of adventures from there. I loved this book, but unfortunately I was reading this book at the same time as the Illuminae Files, so I felt like I could, couldn't give it my full attention. 
I still ended up giving it five stars. I love Victoria Schwab's writing. A beautifully written story that wasn't overdone in my opinion. That's one of the thing I hate most is when writers like just do too much. I feel like I like it when they kind of keep it simple. I've read book two which is A Gathering of Shadows and I love that one even more and also gave it five stars so I cannot wait to read A Conjuring of Light which is the last book. Fantastic series, will definitely read it again and I think I need to pick this one up in the special edition. I'm just saying. So the fifth book I read was for the Bookie Grail and the group book was actually Stardust by Neil Gaiman but I had read that in April for my owls and I didn't want to reread it. The reigning queen of the book junkie trials, Rachel Marie, had told us that we could choose whatever book we wanted for the bookie grail as long as it was a book about a characters that were on a quest to find something. After kind of going through my options, I went for The Raven Boys by Maggie Stiefvater. I almost DNF'd this book because, as I said previously, I like a simple writing style and I feel like Maggie Stiefvater's style is a little bit more fancy, a little bit more purpley. Yeah, purple prose is a term that just means like the writing is very flowery and descriptive, almost over descriptive, and I feel like Maggie Stiefvater kind of toes the line there. So once I got used to her writing style, I did start to really enjoy the story. Another thing that made me almost want to DNF it is because it throws you right into the story and like I had no clue what was going on. I knew they were looking for something, but I was just like, what is happening? <laughs> and you don't want a book to tell you too much, but you also don't want to start reading a book right in the middle of the action and be like, okay, I have no idea who these people are, I have no idea what they're doing. And I kind of felt like that, but as I kept reading, obviously I began to understand the story more. So it's about four boys that go to a prestigious academy and they are on a paranormal quest. They come into contact with a girl called Blue. She is the daughter of a psychic and she lives in a house full of psychics. And Blue's not really a psychic but she does have the ability to amplify the powers of psychic people around her. But she kind of runs into the Raven Boys and gets involved with them and she joins them on their paranormal quest. I started reading this book in ebook form and I DNF'd it I think around 50 pages or maybe even earlier than that and a lot of people have said that the audiobook was good so I decided to go for the audiobook through my library and the app Libby and it's narrated by Will Patton. He does the Virginia southern accent so well. I really liked his voice and sometimes his voice was just downright hilarious when he was doing characters like Persephone. His voice for Kala was rather funny. His voice for P Kavinsky was odd. <laughs> hey Lynch! Regardless, he did a fa fantastic job. The audiobook is what saved me and pulled me into the story and I was able to enjoy it from there. It was a relief to me to find out that I did like this book because it's a four book fantasy series, paranormal fantasy, and it has a pretty big following and fandom. You know, it's never fun when you read a book and you don't like it, <laughs> a book that is beloved by many people. That's never fun. So I was relieved like, okay, I do actually like this book. I have since listened to book two. I still need to read books three and four. Uh, and I ended up giving The Raven Boys four stars. Next, I'm going to talk about one of my favorite series of all time. I feel like this series does not get talked about on book two. Since I finished the bookie Grail, I was allowed to explore the map at my leisure. So I decided 
the next book I was going to read, the prompt for that was to reread a fave. I chose Succubus Dreams, which is book three in the Georgina Kincaid series by Rochelle Mead. You have probably heard of Rochelle Mead. She wrote Vampire Academy series and then Bloodlines. I absolutely adored both of those series. My friend Tony had been telling me that she loved the Georgina Kincaid series. It's definitely adult because there is some sexy time. Definitely not smut, but she's a succubus, so <laughs> she needs to sleep with men to uh, sustain her life force. So. so I've read this series start to finish a couple years ago, and for this reread, I decided to listen to the audiobooks, and I actually think the narrator fits Georgina extremely well. So Georgina is a succubus, but she is kind of like a moral succubus, I guess. She likes to only sleep with men who are kind of seedy. Every time she sleeps with a man, she takes time off of his life and gains it. She is a lesser immortal and in her little group of friends there are vampires, incubi, imps, and her boss is a greater demon. It's funny to see that hell is run just like any other business or corporation. <laughs> Georgina has quotas that she has to meet, and if she doesn't meet these quotas, her boss gets pissed at her. <laughs> There's changes in staff, um, territories and such. People get promoted. Georgina works in a bookstore and she tries to maintain a regular life and blend in with regular humans, and one day, her favorite author comes to her bookstore for a signing and they kind of develop a relationship and stuff starts to happen from there. Uh, the only unfortunate thing about this series is that I don't love the covers. I actually don't love Rochelle Mead covers in general because she uses actual people and their faces and I don't know. I just don't like it when covers do that. I don't think they should. Georgina is an extremely likable character. She is just so much fun and she gets herself into all these ridiculous situations and I just love her. I really love her and I enjoyed th listening to the audiobooks for this reread. It's just a good series and I feel like a lot of people haven't read it, or if they have, they don't talk about it. Upon my reread of this series, I changed my original rating of four stars and I bumped it up to five, just because these books are so much fun. The next prompt was to read a book with dragons, and rather than choose something huge like Game of Thrones or The Priory of the Orange Tree, I decided to go with The Tea Dragon Society by Katie O'Neill. This is definitely me taking the easy route. I believe Goodreads says it has just 72 pages in this graphic novel, so you can read it in like under an hour. It was originally a webcomic series, so what I did is I read it online for free. I've said this before, I live in Japan, I have to be careful about the amount of books I buy because I'm not planning on staying in Japan forever. I'm gonna eventually ship these books home. If I can read a graphic novel online for free, I'm definitely gonna do that. But at the same time, this book was so cute so adorable. I just feel like I need it in my life and just to be able to have it and hold it in the cute little dragons. Just the cutest stinking book I've ever read. Nothing really happens. There's not really that much of a plot. It's just about this girl who tends to tea dragons. They are named after the teas that they produce. Like I think leaves grow on their back so there's like chamomile and jasmine and it's just adorable. I mean the cutest book you'll ever read in your entire life. I adored this book. I gave it five stars. This is definitely child friendly. It's adult friendly if you like cute stuff. There has been a sequel. I'm not sure what it's called. The Tea Dragon Festival. 
I think. And that looks adorable and I definitely want to read that too. So the prompt for the eighth book was to read an indulgent read and I chose These Broken Stars by Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner. Now I have read this book before and I remember really really liking it. I thought it was going to be an indulgent read for me. If you don't know, I have a disorder called fibromyalgia, which is a musculoskeletal pain and fatigue disorder. It comes with a lot of other symptoms and one of the symptoms is memory loss. And so that allows me to read books that I've already read and I remember almost nothing from. So I remembered this book a lot differently and then I was reading it and I was just like, what is going on here? Yeah, I read it for the first time in May of 2014 and I believe I gave it five stars then. I did not love it as much this time around and I think I dropped my rating down to four stars, but it was still highly enjoyable. It's a sci-fi story. Anything that takes place in space or on another planet is like, it's right up my alley. We have a girl called Lilac who is the daughter of essentially the richest man in the universe. And we have Tarver. He comes from a very different background. He is not part of the elite, if you will, but he is a decorated war soldier. They are aboard this luxury ship called the Icarus. It says right in the synopsis that the luxury ship that they are on is pulled out of hyperspace and it does crash. And so Lilac and Tarver has, have to survive on this strange planet and a lot of weird stuff starts happening. I would call this book a sci-fi romance. There's a lot of romance in it. If hate to love interests you, um, I think you will like this one. A lot of people like that trope. I am just kind of meh on it, but I did still enjoy my reread of it. I just unfortunately docked it down a star. For book nine, the prompt was to read a beautiful book and I chose my Ravenclaw edition of Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Yes, I am a Ravenclaw, a very proud Ravenclaw. Of course, this book is beautiful. There is some extra goodies in the back. Just a gorgeous edition, and I mean, what can you say about this book? I've probably read it more than 10 times, along with all the other Harry Potter books. So of course it was a five star read for me. I have read the American versions. And so it was cool to read the UK versions and see what they call stuff. Like we say boogers, they say bogey. We say stove, they say hob. So I did enjoy reading about stuff like that. And a couple times I had to ask my neighbor from the UK. He's since moved back home, but I had to ask him like, um, excuse me, what is a hob? Like, <laughs> I genuinely did not know. Of course, five out of five. Love, 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 love. Nothing more to say about that. The 10th book, the prompt was to read the next book in a series. So I chose book four of the Georgina Kincaid series, which was called Succubus Heat by Rochelle Mead. So I've already talked about this series, but as I said before, Georgina has this kind of cohort, uh, this group of friends, vampires, succubi, incubi, demons, angels, and it's just so hilarious to me how <laughs> they interact. It's a fantasy book, but it's also really funny. I enjoy Rochelle Mead's sense of humor. I highly recommend this series. Like I said, there is some sexy time, but I would say it's like 10% of the book. Not overly smutty or anything. You don't understand. Real smut is like 90% of the book. So you definitely could not call this series smutty. It's just adult. My advice would be to give book one a try, uh, which is called Succubus Blues 
and see if you like it or not. If you like Succubus Blues, then you're definitely gonna like all the other books in the series. Um, I think there's like six, five or six books. There's a lot of books in the series. The next prompt was to read something gory, and so I chose There's Someone Inside Your House by Stephanie Perkins. I first heard about this book over on Becca and the Books channel, and she was actually the Marquess of Magi for the Team Magi and she had recommended this book. It's a slasher thriller and with thrillers I don't want to say too much because then you'll spoil the book, but it's about Makani who's a high school girl who has moved back to her hometown from Hawaii where she's been for quite a while, like the past 10 years or something, or maybe more than that. So she, she moves back to her hometown and her classmates start getting murdered. I think this is YA. I'm not sure. I would peg it as YA because it is gory. The murders are described in detail, but it, it didn't read like an adult book to me. There's a killer on the loose and they're targeting high school students. It was definitely gory, definitely suspenseful. Uh, I couldn't tell what was going to happen next, so that was good. It wasn't predictable. I kept wanting to read to see what was going to happen, so what more can you really ask from a thriller? It, it didn't blow me away or anything, but it was still a fun read and I gave it four stars. We're on book 12 now, right? Whew. I am freaking exhausted. The prompt for book 12 was to read A Tearjerker and I went with Second Chance Summer by Morgan Matson. Earlier in the year, I read Amy and Roger's Epic Detour and I just loved it so much. So I was really excited to read another Morgan Matson book. I would describe this book as a second chance romance. I mean, duh, Jennifer, it's called Second Chance Summer, crying out loud. Great, in my notes, I didn't write the character's name or anything. I mean, I definitely remember what happened. So it's about a girl uh, and her family go up to their lake house for the summer. And her dad is dying of cancer. And so they decide they're gonna do one last summer as a family. The main character of the story, God, I cannot remember her name <laughs> for the life of me. The main character of the story, she meets up with her ex-boyfriend and also her ex-best friend. This book is about, you know, summer adventures by the lake, all the wonderful things I miss about American summer. I don't think I was bawling my eyes out, but I definitely teared up. I first started reading this book on ebook and then I switched to audiobook. I mean, any book where a character is dying of cancer is gonna be sad and it's gonna make you cry unless you're heartless. I believe I ended up giving Second Chance Summer four out of five stars. The next book, book 13, was to read a book about royalty. And naturally I chose Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. I read this on ebook. I loved this book. Obviously, there is an astounding amount of hype surrounding this book. We have the son of the first female American president and the Prince of Wales. They get into kind of a scuffle at a big event. Then the media goes crazy like, oh, the son of the president hates the Prince of Wales and blah, blah, blah. Damage control team decides that uh, Alex, the son of the president and Prince Henry of Wales are going to pretend like they're best friends for the media. They set up all these kind of different schemes for them to, you know, go to events together and look like they're just best buddies. So the president and the royal family can kind of put their scandal behind them. So it is set in the near future. And I think Casey McQuiston announced on her Twitter that as of now, we are officially on the red, white, and royal blue timeline, which is cool. If only we had a female American president and not the president we have currently. 
not saying anything, I'm just saying. Yeah, Alex has this kind of weird Draco Malfoy-ish obsession, hate obsession type of thing with Prince Henry. Once they start participating in their little scheme to fool the public, they actually do become friends and then some other stuff happens. I'm not gonna say anything. I fell in love with the characters of this book, Alex and Henry, their freaking banter. I think like, oh my God, I think Henry sends Alex a picture of his dog in like a Gryffindor scarf <laughs> and Alex re replies with, who are you kidding you Hufflepuff ass bitch? <laughs> I, I did write some quotes from this book because I freaking loved it so much. I don't know who you think you're kidding, you Hufflepuff ass bitch. And one of, one of the quotes Henry says is, you are the thistle in the tender and sensitive arse crack of my life. Oh my God. Completely and totally worth the hype in my opinion. It's a pretty long book. I think it's over four, it, it's definitely over 400 pages, maybe almost 500 pages. The entire time I was texting my friends like, you need to read this freaking book. And I did convince one friend to read it and she loved it too. Of course, it got five stars from me and I'm excited to see what Casey McQuiston does in the future. Cause I'm pretty sure this was her debut novel. Hell of a debut novel, if you ask me. Good grief. <sighs> book 14, we're getting toward the end. Thank God, cause I've been filming for like an hour. The next book, the prompt was to read a horror novel and I chose You by Carolyn Kepnes. Before reading You, I had watched the first episode of the Netflix adaptation and I really liked it. I just love Penn Badgley and he does a fantastic job. While reading You, I kept picturing Penn Badgley. Best part of this book is it is told from Joe Goldberg who is a stalker. It's told from his point of view. And so he says stuff like, oh, you're not wearing a bra today. You want me to notice, blah, blah, blah. I see you walking into your house and definitely creepy. He works in a bookstore and one day a cute young college co-ed, or maybe she's getting her master's, I'm not sure. She definitely goes to school. She's a young writer and her name is Guinevere Beck and she comes in, they have kind of like a flirty little exchange and then Joe is hooked and he starts stalking Guinevere Beck, AKA Beck. Especially the Net Netflix adaptation shows you how scary it is, how if you're not careful, you can be stalked so easily by someone through the means of social media. All of Beck's stuff, nothing's private, so anyone can view like her Facebook and her Instagram. So yeah, Joe is just, he's a creepy dude, but also like he's a creepy stalker with a heart of gold. I did have some issues with it, unfortunately. I really enjoyed it at first and then things kind of started to go downhill for me. One of them being I felt that the book was just entirely too long. A couple other issues that I don't want to say because it would spoil it for you. I ended up giving this book just three stars. I think it's my lowest rated book on the entire readathon that I did. And I've heard Hidden Bodies, the sequel, is not good. I've heard nothing but bad things about it. And many people who adored you say, don't even waste your time with the sequel, Hidden Bodies. I've watched maybe three or four episodes of the Netflix show, and I think it follows the story pretty closely. And honestly, I would recommend the Netflix show over the book. That's just my opinion. The last book I read was for the prompt to read a book that takes place at least partly on sea. I chose Summer of Salt by Katrina Leno. I read this on ebook. And honestly, I mainly chose it because it was short. It was like 200 something pages. And also I had heard that there was a female-female romance and I enjoy LGBT romances more than straight romances. So if there is a book that has any type of LGBT romance, I'm just like, give it to me, I wanna read that. 
So we follow two sisters, Georgina and Mary, who live in a town called By the Sea. It's like a little island, I guess. And they live in an inn that her mother runs. And every summer, people flock to By the Sea to view this bird. I think her name is Annabelle. She is like a 300 year old mystical bird that comes to roost on the island every summer. And she's got like a huge following of people. Just a very special bird, obviously something a little otherworldly there, a little magical. I had heard this book was said to have practical magic vibes, and so I definitely wanted to read it because of that. I would call it magical realism mystery type of book, because there is a mystery that the characters are trying to solve. I wouldn't say it gave me strong practical magic vibes. Uh, I adore the movie Practical Magic. I wouldn't say this book was as good as Practical Magic the movie. Definitely not. It was cute, it was light, it was fun. It didn't leave a huge impression on me. I think I gave it four stars, but if I had to change my rating now, I might drop it down to three or 3.5. Nothing really negative to say about it, but Again, nothing, no strong impact. <sighs> Let's do a quick honorable mention to the books that I did not finish. The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is a book I tried to listen to on audiobook, would have been book 16. The prompt for that was to read an intimidating book. It was narrated by Stephen Fry, so that was fantastic. I think I made it to around 50% and I did not finish it. I wasn't really enjoying myself. I know it's an allegory. I know it's a satire, a parody about life. And there were some parts that were genuinely funny and I laughed out loud, but it was just a bit too nonsensical for me. I, I don't love books that are allegories. The Little Prince. <coughs> Maybe I'm just too dumb or too lowbrow. I don't know, I didn't care for it. And so I did DNF it. And also I just ran out of time. If I would have had a few more days, I probably would have finished it. But once the readathon was over, I didn't feel like continuing. The last book that I partially read, I think I made it like around 50 pages in or so, was Red Rising by Pierce Brown. This is another book so graciously sent to me by my friend Rebecca. And I simply just ran out of time. So I definitely do want to read this book and the other books in the series in the future. Um, so let's just read the back real quick. It says, his wife taken, his people enslaved, driven by a longing for justice and the memory of lost love, Darrow will stop at nothing to bring down his enemies, even if he must become one of them to do so. And the prompt for this was to read a book with war, military, or political themes. And I, I, I believe we are not on Earth. Are we on Mars? I'm not sure. It, it didn't grab me. That's not uncommon for a lot of books. Some of my most favorite books of all time are books that didn't grab me at first. And this didn't grab me, but I have heard wonderful things about this book and this series. So I definitely would uh, like to give this book a chance. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. There you have it. We are finally done. Uh, those are the 15 books I read. I'm still kind of learning how to give good synopsis, synopses, and convey my feelings. I honestly, I'm just like, this book, it was, um, good. I'm still learning. I'm a new booktuber, so take it easy on me, please. But yes, I read 15 freaking books in July. I highly doubt I will attempt to read 15 books in the near future. Maybe next year I can try it again for another readathon like The Owls or The Newts, or maybe even the book Junkie Trials again. I don't know. I had a lot of fun. Definitely a good sense of accomplishment reading 15 books in a month. I, I think it's impressive. Maybe you don't, but thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Toodaloo!